So now we want to examine how the binormal changes with arc lengths. So as we move along the curve, how does the binormal change? Now remember the binormal is equal to t cross n. So if we take the derivative of the binormal, then the product rule applies. Now be careful with the product rule with the cross product because the order matters in, in cross product multiplication. But um, the way that you first learn the product rule is that it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. In this case, the times is the cross product. So um, in that particular order, then that is true. Now, <clears throat> we know dt ds. We just figured out that t, dt ds is kappa n. All right. But n cross n would be 0, because those two vectors point in the same in the same direction. Remember, the length of the cross product is the area of the parallelogram created by those. If those two vectors point in the same direction, then the parallelogram has no area. And so this must be the 0 vector, because it has length 0. OK, so actually we know that this is t cross dn ds. Now, let's, we actually know that dn ds, we know that that is perpendicular to n, right? Because n is a vector whose length is always the same. And we've shown that if a vector's length doesn't change, the only thing that can change is its direction. And so dn ds is going to have to be perpendicular to the original vector. That means dn ds must lie in the plane created by t and, let's see, t and b, right? So dn ds could have some part in the t direction and some part in the b direction. OK, so if we, if we put that in here, then we get t crossed with some constant times t plus another constant times b. This is just saying that um, that the NDS has to lie in the, in the plane created by um, T and B, which is the rectifying plane. OK, so let's see here. If we do the cross product, the cross product is distributive. And scalars come through. So we get C1 T cross T plus C2 T cross B. Now T cross T, because those two vectors point in the same direction, those are 0. And we just have to figure out, what is t cross b? So we look at our coordinate system. Let's say we have our unit tangent this way. And we're turning in the direction of the unit normal. Then from the right-hand rule, if I put my fingers here and curl them this way, with my right hand, my thumb is going to point straight up. OK, so th this is the relationship between t and b. Now if we take t cross b, t cross b um, is going to be um, n. Right? So in this case, no, oops, t cross b, if I put my fingers here and curl my fingers, then my thumb is going to point that way. So it's going to be negative n. So t cross b is going to be negative n. And therefore, um, db ds is um, the opposite of c2 times n. Remember, c2 is how much of dn ds is in the direction of b. So we have d, db ds is equal to minus C2n. Now remember, on our curve, if we have our, our tangent this way, then, if, then this is saying that if b changes, b moves um, in this, b moves away from n, basically, right? C2 determines how it, how it moves. But it, it moves, its, its change is perpendicular to b in the direction of n. That means if we look at this at this plane, um, the plane created by n and b, and, um, that is the normal plane. And what's happening is that we're sort of twisting in the normal plane. We're twisting around the curve. And so this number c2 is called the torsion. And so torsion as in twisting. So this is sort of the, the twisting amount. So we call this minus tau n. So this is the Greek letter tau. Um, tau is t for torsion. All right. Good. Now, to actually calculate torsion, one thing that you can do is to take, if we were to take um, both sides of this equation, so we have db ds is equal to minus tau n. If we dot both sides with n, we get db 
ds equals minus tau, oh, db ds dot n, sorry, equals minus tau n dot n. So both sides are being dotted by n here. And when we do that, n dot n, since n is a unit vector, is 1. So we get db ds dot n is negative tau times 1, or just negative tau. That means tau is negative db ds dot n. Now if you remember, there was an easier formula for getting the curvature that involved using the velocity and the acceleration. There's also a formula that is sometimes easier for finding tau. Um, so this formula says you can also find tau by taking the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. So this indicates taking the determinant. And the, the entries in this matrix, these dots, those, those are usually the usual physics notation for a derivative with respect to time. So this is basically then the three components of the velocity, because that's the derivative of x with respect to time, y with respect to time, z with respect to time. These are the three components of the acceleration. So you have velocity, and then a row that's the acceleration. And the last row is the derivative of the acceleration, which you might remember is called the jerk. So you, take, you make that matrix, you take its determinant, you calculate v cross a, and you find the length of that and square it. And that's another kind of recipe for finding torsion. Finding torsion this way can sometimes be difficult because you have to find um, you fi have to find t, and then so you can find n, and then you have to find b by taking t cross n, and then you have to find the derivative of b with respect to s. Now finding the derivative of b with respect to s. Um, is not so bad because you don't actually have to do the arc length parameterization. Remember, we're thinking that given t, you could calculate s, and given s, you could calculate the, bino the binormal vector. You could find the value of the binormal vector. And so we really have kind of a chain here where the binormal depends on t. So by the chain rule, the derivative of b with respect to t is equal to the derivative of b with respect to s times the derivative of s with respect to t. Now remember, the derivative of s with respect to t is how far you go per unit time. So this is your speed, which is the same as the length of the velocity vector. So we can solve this and find that you can find db ds from db dt. db ds is db dt divided by the speed, which just means there's no need to find to calculate db ds. There's no need to rewrite b in terms of that arc length parameter. This may be a shortcut to doing this formula for finding the torsion.